Chloe here with Rooted Dog Training, and we're going to share with you a pro tip today. And we're actually going to talk to you about harnesses. Are they good or bad? Should you be using them? Should you be not? Well, the truth is, most people use harnesses to walk their dog. But in reality, using a harness will actually encourage, or very likely, encourage pulling from your dog. Not every dog does, but most do. Uh, now, a lot of people use harnesses. It's probably one of the most commonly used tool in order to walk your dog because people like them. They feel secure. But really, if you think about it, the harness is designed to fit around this part of the body, the chest and shoulder area. That's actually the strongest part of the dog's body. So it's going to most likely encourage pulling. Think about mushing dogs, right? What, do they, what tool do they use to encourage the dog to pull? Harnesses. It's also used in other dog sports to help create that pulling or that tension for the dog. So if you want a pulling dog, cool, use a harness. If you don't, I'm going to highly encourage you to move to something else. Um, now there's tons of different walking collars and tools out there in order to help you get a dog that walks nicely on leash without the, the pulling and the gagging on a collar, which is a big reason why people go to harnesses because they don't like that gagging effect that uh, happens when your dog pulls on a regular collar. Uh, some even like harnesses because they feel secure. I, I think I mentioned that earlier. But in reality, I have seen so many dogs get loose from harnesses. It's happened to me on, in my dog walking days and I've seen it happen to so many friends and clients. So it's not really gonna be your secure tool. The, uh, without getting too much into proper training tools for teaching your dog how to walk nicely, what you really want to do is look into a, a collar around the neck that's going to give you that control. Uh, our favorites are prong collars, um, but you can also use other things like slip leads and different kinds of you know tools like, like martingales. Those aren't going to give you the best um, equipment in order to teach your dog to heal, but it's going to get you away, from, uh, help you. It will help you on the path to getting dogs to stop healing. But our deal, our ideal, our, our ideal tool is a prong collar. But without getting into detail of that, what I want to show you is when you use a collar, this is just a slip lead, not ideal um, for an average dog owner to use a slip lead for a walking tool, unless your dog walks nicely already. But you want it to fit high up on the neck. Your collar should be as high as possible. So for using a prong collar, uh, which would be most effective, you want it to be placed high on the neck, right? So rather than a harness is low in the strongest part of the body, you want to be high to where you're actually going to have more control and better ease as far as guiding and even correcting your dog if you need to. Okay, so hope this tip was helpful and helped you understand um, kind of the differences as far as harnesses and collars and help you understand the purpose behind different training tools like harnesses. There's a variety of training tools out there, specifically even just to walk your dog, but we want to make sure that we're understanding those tools and, and understand how what they were purposed or how they were purposed to be used. Um, that way you can have the, you know, the, the behavior that you're desiring out of your dog. So if you have any more questions about harnesses, feel free to drop them below. Hope this was helpful, you guys, and we'll talk to you real soon.